two. Okay, so we get started. Yes. So um, okay, let's see sure. who's on, uh, Jim and Randy. Um, so I would like to call this uh, finance committee of April 14th to order. Uh, may I have a approval of the agenda? Madam Chair, I move for approval of the agenda. And I'll second that. So it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor, well, first of all, is there any corrections or additions that should be added? Seeing none, um, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carried, we have an agenda. We now have to have a motion of the minutes of our last meeting. Move approval. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carried. So we have the approval, we have our minutes. Uh, next up is the third quarter fiscal year report. Lynn will take that. Good morning, okay. everyone. Good morning. morning. Faces, most of them. <laughs> So sorry, I've been working with Nick trying to get my lighting and, and you know, because I know you all want to see what I look like, but um, <laughs> this is the best I can do. So I'm here and nice to see y'all. So, um, so behind tab number F3, you will locate the third quarter report for fiscal year 2021. We all there? I think so. It says comparative summary. Yes, correct. Comparative summary of agency budget revenues and expenditures. This is for the period ending March 31, 2021. Nine months. Wow, already. It's amazing. So it's a positive report to share with you all. With an annual budget of 2.5 million, we have received 2.2 million in revenue as budgeted. And a couple of lines I would like to highlight that Fran may elaborate on would be the second line, the NOC major minor, and then near the bottom of the revenues, the fines. In both of those categories, you can see we made 189% of the budget exceeded obviously on the NOC and 250 on the fines. That's uh, NOC as a result in February, we received $61,000 from a source, Sierra Pacific, for an investigation fee. On the wow. other end, with the fines, we also received in March $53,000 from the same source, SPI, of $53,000 from that source. That is the reason for those um, increases in both of those two lines. Fran, if you want to elaborate on why we collected the investigation fee and the settlement, yeah. SPI, I know we briefly talked about that in previous board meetings. Right. So what happened, the SPI, this was a situation where um, they, they were replacing, or they are in the process now, replacing eight dry kilns. And um, they, they'd done the asbestos survey, that wasn't a problem, um, but they hadn't put in a demolition permit. And that, that notice the violation actually was separate, but Robert was out on an inspection and noticed that not only had they de demolished two of the, because they're doing two at a time, two of the dry kilns, um, but they hadn't put in a notice of construction for the project. Um, so basically they, every, you know, they, and they kept working um, for a period of time. Um, the one thing that they did not do was they did not operate the dry kilns until they got the notice of construction. And we worked hard because there was a potential that it was going to be a tier two analysis going through ecology. Um, there were a lot of things that were happening. Actually, there was a tier two analysis that went through ecology. We got them to do it, you know, expeditiously, um, and they they got their permit. Um, so this whole thing ran from about you know, Robert was out there. I think it's July. They they put in their notice of construction. Um, I think at the end of June we got it early July, but they'd already demolished things. They'd already started construction. So. This, and, and we spent a huge amount of time doing an investigation and therefore the, the fee went, and I wanted that to go back in a notice of construction because it had to do with the engineer and compliance support 
for what was actually going on, for what you know what was happening. Um, and then um, the actual fine for doing the work without the notice of construction went into an, into the fines account. Um, so I also, I mean, SPI is great to work with. Um, and they, they, so they did replace two of the eight and I, I reminded them because they're doing two at a time, their demolition permit is only good for a year. And I think it expires in July, I think of this year. So they know that if they're gonna you know, go beyond it, they're gonna have to you know, get a new permit. I don't want them to have problems. They were wonderful to work with. I met with the owner of George, I forget his last name. Um, he was great to work with, he understood. They knew they, and, and the other thing was our, um, our engineer had actually had communication with them a year ahead of time, telling them what they needed to do. So they had, they had a year's notice. They knew they needed to put a notice of construction. They needed to do a demolition permit. And for whatever reason, they spaced, they didn't do it. That will never happen again, I'm sure. I'm sure they're gonna work. You know, and, and we always work well with SBI. So it was a long process. Um, it turned out to be pretty collaborative and uh, on the set, and we actually came to a settlement. So the, the fine actually should have been probably higher, but we worked with them and we settled on the amounts. Um, so, um, it, you know, it was expensive for them. It went into our budget, which helps us this year. Um, and hopefully from now on, we have a clean slate and we're moving forward. How did they get and through the SEPA and permitting process locally without us? They, so for SEPA, I don't know if they even had to go to SEPA. Did they, Mark? Do you remember? I have to check exactly, Jim, but it was a replacement. Right. Okay, so in replacing, they, they didn't take up any more of a footprint. Right. However, they did increase their capacity. Right. Uh, so. I, I, I don't think SEPA was a problem. So, um, yeah, I and I know they got, they did get their building permits. I know they got that from the county. Okay. Yeah. So they were they were permitted locally. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So yes. to me, that would be worth just uh, as a side note, a reminder to all of our counties and cities that if they're doing anything in these general areas, we need to be uh, permitted before they give final approval. And we do do that. And some of our local jurisdictions are fantastic, and others are not. So we do that continually. Absolutely, it's very Thank important. You. So we work collaboratively with these guys. Yeah. Sorry, a little bit of a sidetrack, but. Thank you. Oh, that's good. Good question. So a quick, uh, this is just because um, my hearing's kind of bad. Um, so it's F-R-I? Yeah, S-P-I. Pacific, Pacific Industries. Oh, oh, okay. And where where is this located again? This was in Ab Aberdeen. This was Aberdeen. Aberdeen. They have multiple. They've got a number. We have one in Shelton, Aberdeen. It, it's a huge company. And they're actually out of California. Okay. Yeah. And next, thank you. Next you. Is, is SPI Lumber, which is this one, and then next to it is SPI Cojet. So there's two facilities right near one another. Oh, okay. Sorry, Lynn. Oh, no, no, that's okay. Thank you for adding that information, Fran. Um, as you can see on the revenue side, uh, there is a lot of information that we're sharing with you how that 2.2 million in revenue breaks down. As you can see, 58% of that 2.2 million is a result of fees, 19% is a result of our grants with ecology, EPA, 21% is from the assessments, and then 3% is the other, which basically is our rental income and our investment income. And in comparison to last year at this time, we're almost even. Last year, we were at 87% of collected revenues. This year, we're at 86%. So again, we are on target. It's a tight budget. And uh, it's, it's, it's great to be able to report that we're still on track nine months into the year, considering everyone's environment at this point in time. Can I add one more thing for notice of construction? You know, the, our, you know, everybody's working remotely and our engineers have just done an amazing job of, you know, the, we, we are getting notice of construction in, we're getting new ones. Um, and I, I was saying to Cynthia before the meeting that the building industry, as you know, there's not much housing stock out there. And so we do a lot with, with timber in the building industry. And so we've actually gotten, our, we've, got, we've gotten a lot of work in for our engineers 
um, processing notices of construction. So the number was higher because of the uh, investigation fee, but it's also because we're just getting, luckily, a lot of notices of construction in. So that's good for us. The yeah. last, the last comment I would like to add on the revenue is that we have rented all of our nine suites, offices, including the warehouse. And the nice thing about this, the two vacancies that we have faced in the last couple in the last couple of months, uh, we've had existing tenants interested in expanding their space. So that has really helped not having to bring in new spaces and unknown clientele, et cetera, et cetera, to our building. So uh, that's nice news. <laughs> so we are fully leased. Yes, we did. Um, we got approached with a reduction in rent for these two smaller suites, and we were able to work it out and agree to a, a slightly uh, decrease in the rent amounts. And we also had a hard time really, we were marketing them, but we weren't getting what we had high hopes for of uh, getting a, getting it rented at the rent that we had established. So it's, uh, we're, we rented one unit from 325, we decreased to 250, and there's another one that's also, sorry, uh, too many numbers in the head right now, but the other one was also reduced. So but we, we will, um, with my projections, we will uh, almost cover what we anticipated. We anticipated 61,300 this year, and I worked at where we'll bring in 58,404. So even with the vacancies and the reduced rent, um, we're, we're, we're good on that end. That's cool. Yeah. It's, it pays for the maintenance. That's what I was hoping for. Nice. Yeah. Does yeah. it pay for utilities or they, do they pay for that? No, uh, the utilities is included. The only thing that uh, the tenant will pay for is the rent that we charge them and their own internet and telephone. Okay. So that covers our revenue collected nine months into the year. Is there any questions on the revenue before we move on to the expenditures? Hearing none, I will move forward to the expenditures. So um, on the expenditure side, on our payroll, salaries and benefits, we're, we're, we've expended 1.5 million versus um, the 2 point a million that has been established for that category. We're, we're on target. We should be at 75%. We're slightly under that at 73%. And part of that has to do with Employment Security Department did not increase the premiums starting in January of 2021 for the new paid family medical leave. And the AWC was able to keep our medical dental life vision premiums at a lower uh, premium versus what I had anticipated a slightly higher uh, premium amount. So uh, that's some of the savings right there. I'm on the, that board. So uh, yeah, it, we work really hard to kind of stabilize things. And sometimes it's easier than other times. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and we thank you, uh, Cynthia, for your efforts and and keeping the premiums at a, a reasonable level, for sure. AWC is great to work with. And there's a, a webinar that I'll be jumping on board right after this uh, finance and board meeting today. So <laughs> yeah. to the non-payroll expenditures, you know, our attorney, postage, insurance. Uh, we have spent 115000 of 200000 budgeted. We're well under in uh, a lot of the categories, and we anticipate that um, we will. I've done a projection through the rest of the year, and I anticipate based on you know workload, the needs of the agency, uh, we'll definitely be underspent in the non payroll category. In the maintenance and operations of our building. We have spent 61% and we're slightly under in our uh, monitoring and security and slightly under in the maintenance. And part of that had to do with 
we are not um, pushing getting some of the maintenance done as we had budgeted, but we are now looking at getting our front door of suite A replaced because it really needs it and also the flooring because there was some water damage. So we're looking at going out for bids on that. Moving on to the operational expenses of our grants, uh, we are on target there and we pretty much have spent all of the wood smoke reduction funds that we have been allocated. I know that Dan has actually allocated the funds that uh, are remaining in our current contract. There is some word that we may be getting some additional funds by the end of this fiscal year. That is yet to be determined, I guess, at this point. We'll see. <laughs> and as you all know, the Community Scale Air Toxics Program has ended. And Odell did publish a, um, a journal. Um, a, she published her paper with a journal, Atmospheric Environment. And she, she had mentioned that it was quite, uh, she was pleased to see that it was so quickly went through the process. They really liked her paper. I don't know if she is going to tell you that, but they really liked her paper. And it was quickly published in an unusually uh, speed. So in fact, they didn't come back with any comments on their paper. So which is again very unusual. So I just wanted to get that in there for her. <laughs> I'm not sure she'll share the good news with y'all. So, um, but so looking at the bottom line for expenditures, we have spent a total of 71% of our budget. And in comparison to last year, we were about 5% higher. So again, we're standing in a good position. And with my projections for the remaining fiscal year, I'm hoping that we're going to be underspent um, overall by maybe $78,000. So obviously, as we get closer to the uh, year end, then um, we'll, we'll have more official uh, numbers. However, these numbers are the ones that we'll, uh, you'll see in our fiscal year 22 budget that we'll cover after this. So that's a lot of information. Again, you have a graph on the right-hand side showing you how the expenditures play out in terms of the four categories. And of the 1.8 million in expenditures, 82% of that is payroll, six non-payroll, four building, and eight is operations for our grants. Any questions on these? Any questions before we move on to page two, the fund balance? Is there any questions? Nope. All right. Go ahead. Lynn. So behind door number F4, uh, yeah, F4 it looks like, <laughs> is the fund balance sheet. And in, in summary, we started the fiscal year July 1, 2020 with 1 1.7 million. As of March 31, we were at a little over 2 million. And the fund balance allocations that the board has allocated are listed there. Obviously, those won't change until year end. So um, we have a total unreserved fund balance of 1.3 and then total reserve of 833. Any questions on the fund balance sheet? Fran, you want to add anything prior to moving on to our next? I think you covered everything. Okay. So shall I move on to our fiscal year 2022 for, uh, uh, um, budget? It's, it, everyone's ready for that? Yes. Okay. Let me get out my other set of paperwork here. So I guess that's F4, excuse me, I was off a little. <laughs> F4 and F5 is the fiscal year 2022 uh, budget and fund values. There's a lot of information here. In column one is last year's actual revenue and expenditures. Column two and 2A are our current year that we're in. And we're gonna be focusing on column number three. That is our budget for next fiscal year, starting July 1, 2021 through June 30th, 2022. 
and we're looking at a budget of 2.6, almost $2.7 million. And of that, we're going to, we have budgeted 183,000 in our unreserved fund balance to balance the budget. That's also contingent on things changing with our final numbers prior to year end. Um, I'm hoping we're not going to get another big fine in. I'm hoping we're not going to get another big NOC payment from a single source. Um, my crystal ball does not, uh, it's kind of fuzzy right now, so I can't confirm that. But what you have in front of you are um, estimated figures that our managers have reviewed, and we're all in agreement with them at this point in time. For the grants, um, there's really nothing unusual there, with the exception of you're not seeing included the air toxics. We have uh, included our wood stove, um, wood smoke reduction program, a continuation of that over the next couple of years. On the fees, there's an attached fee schedule for you to review following the, uh, uh, us reviewing our budget. It includes assessments of 464,000. You know, our, our populations in most areas have gone up in our six county region. The Title V program includes the current workload for fiscal year 2022, the repayment to the general fund, and then a contingency fund. It also includes the state grants, that, or excuse me, the fees with FSEC, uh, that is with the state U UTC, our registration fees, our NOC, NOI, outdoor burning, asbestos, and line clearing. There's not really much of a difference in any of those fee categories. And then other, of course, includes our fines, investment income, miscellaneous, and building. I did, however, decrease the investment income because, as you all know, economic conditions here, uh, the the money markets and the savings accounts are not paying what they used to. Even though we do have a nice uh, cushion in our uh, account with the treasurer's office, the, we're probably averaging 1.25% in our interest income. So that pretty- Just one, one note, we use the, the CPI of 1.4, which is what the CPI was for our region. Um, and I use the February number, and so it's 1.4 percent for this year, just so you know how we calculate it. Um, and so on the assessment piece of it, you know, we didn't we didn't increase it last year, so so fiscal year 2021 is the same as 2020, and so in in the 2020 fiscal year 2022 number, it's increased by 1.4 percent. Thanks, Diane. I forgot to add that. Jim had a question. Yeah, I just want to dig in on the investment income a little bit because that it seems like a fairly decent drop, but it compares to where you're at this year. So my my question is, what went down? Because I'm I'm not seeing anything going down uh, as far as investment income. It's all going up. Oh, okay. Well, we had actually budgeted twenty five thousand of interest income for this fiscal year, and we have received half of that nine months into the year we've received 12,500 and i anticipate maybe breaking a thousand dollars april may and june each month so that's gonna put us at about fifteen thousand three hundred and eight dollars of interest income this fiscal year and because all of our funds are liquid we have access to them today this hour Right. Um, our liquidity to our account, our money in our uh, treasurer's account is accessible anytime we want it. It's not going to be tied up in investments, long-term, short-term, that you're going to typically get an additional rate of return on. It's in the county money market? Correct. And they lowered the rate or we have a smaller portfolio? Well, we're, we're part of the overall portfolio. I don't know what piece, I don't know what percentage ORCA is in relation to the rest of other departments. Well, they, they sit on $6 billion a day, so we're dust. Okay, well, okay. 
So I, I guess let me park this because it would be I, one of the things I'm thinking is I don't know if I've ever gotten a good briefing on investment portfolio and what our policies are. So right. could we do that at a future finance meeting? I, I'm, I'm not going to nitpick this right now because we have a lot to do. Yes, sir. I can yeah. actually have. Uh, no, I think we should go out to bid that there's there's money market accounts that are, are going up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, um, I know within our RCW that we are uh, obligated to use the treasure within our jurisdiction. Oh, I didn't know that. I, I thought we could go to bid for a bank like a city. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, well, and that's good. Hey, Jim, these are excellent questions. And thanks for looking at ways that we can make money. <laughs> Every year I go into something new. So, <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, it wouldn't hurt to have, you know, to have the briefing anyway, to talk about how the county invests the money and et cetera. So, that's a really good idea. Yeah. We, can get, we can get Jeff to come and, and, and tell us the story, too. It would be cool. Oh, Jeff Gavin would be great. Fran and I have met with Jeff, and one of his representatives I'm in close contact with on a regular basis, Nicole, who handles all the investments at the Treasury's office. And she really does a, I mean, you should walk into her office, and it's all uh, monitors. It's pretty phenomenal to see the market of, uh, a different market on each monitor screen. It's, it's cool. pretty phenomenal. <laughs> but um, yes, I, I will uh, put this on my to-do list and we can talk about this at another finance meeting. Okay. Yeah, and it probably wouldn't be a bad thing for the whole board to get the briefing at least sure. and we can talk policy after that. You um, I, I have one other comment on revenue before you move on. Um, I, I just want to let this committee know that I'm I don't think it's any surprise that I'm very interested in, in incorporating a new uh, uh, permit fee for outdoor burning in Thurston County in this budget. Um, but I told Commissioner Mejia that I wouldn't do it unless I had, I won't even propose it unless I have her on board. And so I just want to let you know that I'm having that conversation with her and she's digging in with her staff to see where the county is. Um, but I, I want to just make sure I'm open early in this process with all of you to kind of be thinking about that. That's a possibility. And I'll let you know in the next week or two if, if it's real or not. And, and so let me just also say that when we've talked about it in the past, the, the fee would have to be high enough to cover our own cost. We don't want us costing money. And when we've talked about a five or a $10 fee, that in no way covers the cost. So well, well, we're not getting anything now. So it covers something. Well, except that it's all done online. So we don't have to process anything for the most part. So people go online, they they get their burn permit, it's e they, it gets emailed back to them. It's a rare situation now where somebody doesn't have a computer and they actually have us do the work. That's not the norm. The norm is they call us, hey, is there a burn ban? And we answer those kind of questions anyway. But if they qualify for a residential burn permit, they go online and they do it themselves. Yeah, and they can do the transaction at the same time with no no work. We could you, you potentially you'd use the credit card company with yeah you could do that with the credit card company yeah otherwise so I, yeah I, yeah and I and I and and I'm okay if the logistics require more conversation um you know but somewhere between five and twenty dollars for the season would generate us if I remember right somewhere between you know fifteen and fifty grand I can't remember exactly but that that's that's more than we're getting now to do a lot of work well I'd like to cut down on burning in general if we could well, but. Uh, it's my understanding that our policy, well, I don't know if it's written, is to move towards eliminating that and having a permit is the first step. Yeah. No, but okay. again, it's a it's a Thurston County thing, and I want to really respect Commissioner Mejia and the fact that she's new in her role. So, but I want to be uh, just be open with you all. All right. So any further questions on the revenue before we move to the expenditures? Okay, so uh, the first um, section is obviously the payroll, salaries and benefits. And we have applied the CPI of 1.4% on salaries. We have also applied a slight increase with the AWC premium starting with the January 2022 uh, um, start date because AWC obviously runs on a calendar year. So we've included seven months of a slight increase for the benefits. It also reflects the decrease in Department of Retirement Services premium by a little over 2% at 
as you know, they're going down from 12.7 to 10.2 something. So that also is a pretty significant savings. I think it amounts to about $30,000 for the year. So that's why you'll see a drop in the employee benefits from our current fiscal year of 559,000 to 527,000. Hmm. I don't know what they're going to do two years out, but we do know <laughs> at the start of our fiscal year, it's definitely dropping. It's all in the employees who are on the first two, they're also dropping, I think, by 1.5%. So it's almost like a, an increase in pay there, too. But for us, PERS 3, it didn't change. <laughs> so moving on to the non payroll, we have budgeted pretty much the same as last year. We did increase the professional services based on activity and history. But we're pretty much stable at 200,000 for current fiscal year and next fiscal year. What next fiscal year, fiscal year 2022 does not have in it, every other year we have our audit. So you'll see that line go from 23,000 current year to 8,100, the new fiscal year 2022. Other than that, uh, you know, I did apply a, a increase in our endurance insurance. But other than that, things stay pretty much the same. And those significant on you know, professional services, why we rate that we've had a number of, of, of appeals and we've had some pretty egregious um, situations where the fines have been pretty high, $10,000 or so um, for, you know, burning, burning things, you know, uh, doing work without a asbestos survey or demo permit or notification. Um, so we are using our attorneys more because uh, of, you know, the need for their professional services. So that's why we've increased that number. Under the office building operations, we did increase that slightly with some additional maintenance that we're hopefully able to do this current, this new fiscal year. It also includes our debt service on the building and some leasehold improvements. And we'll cover the leasehold improvements right after this in our five-year uh, building expense plan that is also on the agenda. Under the non-administrative operations, uh, a slight increase is due to the community scale air toxic grant that has been completed. Pretty much everything else stays the same. So that wraps up the $2.5 million budget for fiscal year 2022. I did add a little bit of additional information at the bottom to show how and when, if we have a surplus or a deficit, and how it was uh, breaks down and where it goes. We're anticipating 143,000 surplus, 113 is going to repay the general fund for the Title V, and 30,000 is going to establish the Title V contingency. Other than that, that wraps up the fiscal year 2022 budget before we move on to page two, the fund balance. Is there any ad additional questions? Can you, I'm sorry, you said this, but I, I, I didn't track the number. Can you remind me what's in here as far as a, a COLA? 1.4% seller. 1.4? One, Correct. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then, um, is this Fran's, Fran, this is your review year or not? Remind me. Remember, we had my review last year, but I didn't get an increase because of the pandemic. So you're going to potentially give me an increase this year. Okay. And, and did we say finance was going to do that? Yes. Okay. Okay. So I'll talk to you offline and then Cynthia and I will put some together. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then and as far as, and then the only other piece is, do we need to do updated work around salary survey in this year or, or where are we at in that cycle? I don't know how many years it's been. Um, I was kind of hanging tight because of the pandemic. We can look at, you know, I mean, I think, I think it's been five years. And I think we said we we're going to do it every five years. So we could potentially look at 
Yeah. It makes sense to me to come out of the pandemic first. But. Yeah. Yeah. Although if people need more stuff to do, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Need more stuff to do, trust me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> cool, thank you. So when um, we're looking at uh, an increase in uh, your salary, is it, do we need to do that uh, next quarter or the fall? I mean, when is that due? When uh, have, did we assume that it would be due? You mean when would my salary change? Yeah. Um, July 1st. July 1st, okay. Yeah, with the budget. The budget. Yeah. So Frank, can you send Randy and Cynthia and I the comps that you have? I, I doubt, I, I mean, I'm guessing they don't need to be updated. I think you did them last year, so. I have, well, I, what I've been doing is I've been talking to the two people, not Craig, because he's so much bigger, but Mark Buford Northwest and Yuri Southwest. And I, I mean, I can just tell you, so Yuri this year is making 156 and he's going to 165, I think. And Mark this year is at 170 something. I don't know what he's going to in 2022. I haven't heard back from him. I was just asking the two of them since they're on the west side of the mountains. Um, yeah, yeah, that's that's cool. I, I don't I don't know that we need a lot of work if you just send us what you already have. Okay. And, I and, then, from Mark. and then related to that, you know, I, I've been wondering, how are we accommodating employees for their time at home with equipment and ergonomic support? Um, do we need to set aside some extra money for that? Or is everyone taken care of? I think everybody's okay. Um, we only have one employee that took, thing, took equipment home and they had to obviously sign it out. Um, my hope is that we will have most everybody back here in July. So we're, I think we're getting to be at the tail end of this, but we're, we're, it was more of an equipment issue. And so where folks needed to borrow equipment, they have a monitor or a hard drive. Um, but it was only one employee that ended up doing that. Everybody else was able to use what they had at home. So we're, I hope we're on the tail end of all of that. Okay. Well, I think another conversation is whether our office space needs have changed in the new world. So, but that we can do that later. So thank you. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so we're moving on to page two of the budget, the fund balance. And obviously the first column is last year's actual. The second column is our current year. And the third column is the proposed 2022. So we're proposing that we're gonna begin the fiscal year July 1, 2021 with almost $1.8 million. And after adding the revenue of 2.3 and subtracting the expenditures of 2.5, we're hoping to end June 30th, 2022 with $1.6 million. And using 183,000 of the general fund unreserved balance to balance the budget. Following that are the contingency and capital funds per the board approval and establishment. There's not really much to report unless you want me to elaborate in areas. Is there any other additional questions about it? And, and know that at the end of 2020, uh, the end of calendar year 2022, the building will be paid for. Not fiscal year 20, so it'll be fiscal year 2023, but calendar year 2022. December 2022 is our last debt service payment. Right. We'll be spending it, not burning it. <laughs> and we can build 10 housing units in the back. Right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, Mr. Cooper. <laughs> I need every unit I could get. How many tiny homes can you fit back there? I'm sorry. <laughs> Yep. I live in Olympia too. <laughs> so the uh, the next oh the next item is the proposed fee schedule, and that's Rand. And I'm sorry, it's what the next the fee schedule, the draft. Hold on. And that was under tab F6. And it shows oh, it. The, the schedule with the CPI added to the fee. Right. So the first First page is again the assessments, and as I indicated earlier, it's an increase from 1.4. There was no increase last year, so this is <laughs> stayed the same. 
from fiscal year 20 to 21, and now for 2022, it'll go up 1.4%. Um, and so we've added, you know, for, for most, and the agricultural burning, you know, we don't change the fee on that, that's done by, by ecology, so that stays the same. Land clearing, you know, went up again by the 1.4 pages. Um, again, asbestos and demo, the same thing, increased by 1.4. Um, same thing for registration for sources. Um, and the, when the, the major change, well, not major, but for notice of construction, um, we, the fees went up by 1.4, except in areas where there were changes in hours. So again, you know, staff go through and they look at how many hours does it take to actually do this particular type of, of permitting. Um, and, and it's really helpful to the source and for us financially to be able to tell people upfront what we really think the cost is going to be, whether it's, you know, so that they can account for that. And we're sending out less invoices because it's, it's staff time and expense for us to send out multiple invoices. So staff really try to fine tune that. Um, this year also, and you know, Mark can speak to it too, we also looked at the complexity levels and there were things that, you know, we've tried to streamline some things like gas station permitting, some other areas where we tried to cut down on the time and the cost of the permit. So in terms of trying to define what is in a, a complexity level one, which is the lowest complexity level to help staff figure out, you know, where does this really fit um, so that we can be, you know, so not only are we spending the right amount of time, but we're adding the right complexity level to that. Um, and so that's a little bit more, you know, so that that's also all attached and that's a little bit, you know, there's a lot more information um, associated with that. Um, and you'll see on the well, second to last page um, where we talk about level one, we've added some things. We added abrasive blasting and dry cleaner. We added some things to level one that had been higher level, had been level two. So when they were level one, it's a less costly um, complexity level. So trying to figure that out. Um, again, trying to be fair and equitable to everybody, um, and you know, give guidance at the same time to the engineers so that they can make the so they make consistent determinations on where things should be set. I don't know, Mark. Do you have anything you want to add to that? That's basically the fee schedule, um, and then right. NOI. You know, that's at the very last page. Um, so NOI is a set fee; it's not based on hours. Um, so again, those are things, and we've added some, we've added things like rock crushers have been added to NOI. So we, again, try to streamline processes so that if you do notice of construction and you're a rock crusher, you can then, you know, move it to different sites. Um, so we're, again, trying to make things as efficient as we possibly can for our sources. I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Well, I have a, just a general question on um, these assessments. Um, what happens, you, I mean, because this is for 2022, right, and 2023, um, and you have, a, for instance, Lacey is assessed at uh, 52.9K, um, but we probably are closer to Olympia at close to 53, almost in like in a month or two. So how do you adjust when the population is changed during that this coming period when the population isn't um, is has increased? I'm not asking to get charged more. I just want to be curious. I was gonna ask the same question. Do we get to wait for the census data this time or do we have to wait until next year? So we go through, we use the OFM numbers and we're always a year behind. Really? So the so the numbers for 2021 are the 2020 numbers, just so that we have a full year of data. So yeah, your populations, I mean, the populations are always changing. Um, okay. So as an aside from that, you know, when I, so we have a formula that we use um, when we do our core money with the state. And um, again, because in the, the formula is 10%, 80%, let me think, 10% uh, size of the region, we, we're the biggest region. 10% um, I think is per capita and 80% is population. And we're trying to do that every five years so that again, as population shifts, then the allocation from the state and the feds 
is consistent with that. So we're always, I think, whether it's on a on a state federal level or local, we're always a little bit behind. Okay. So I have a question for Randy. How are the counties doing and should we consider suspending the increase in assessment another year? The counties are, again, I apologize, I'm, I'm at the vaccine clinic. So uh, the counties, my county is doing exceptional. I have more money today than in Mason County. Hey, You're cutting in and out. Right? You're cutting in and out. Uh, how about now? Can you hear me a little bit better? Yeah. yeah. Can you? Okay. So as for Mason County, I can tell you we have more cash in the bank now than we ever have in the history of our county. We're doing exceptionally well. Okay. Yeah, that's my sense at the city too. Like I've never had this experience where my unfunded list is getting shorter and shorter instead of longer and longer. So I just wanted to make sure we check in though. Okay. Um, maybe Cynthia, maybe in your report today. <laughs> You can let count have the counties especially weigh in to you if about their financial situation around the assessment. Sure. Okay. I'm hoping that everybody's doing okay. I would hate to get further behind than we are. I don't want to, you know, again, well, remember a number of years ago we did the big increase. Right. I don't want to do that again. That's really hard on everybody on local jurisdictions. So these little increases are a lot more palatable. I, I totally agree, but I know I just want to, in this circumstance, make me, make sure we check in. I agree. Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. I'm good. Yeah, I am too. I, I'm, I know Thurston County was saying they're doing okay too. I mean, it's kind of um, weird, <laughs> to say the least. Yeah. Extreme financial hardship and record sales tax. I, I don't know how they fit together. I don't either, except everybody's home doing, ha having nothing to do except shop. Right. I mean, it's just kind of this crazy thing. Oh, I'll just buy it. <laughs> That's terrible. Consumerism at the worst level. <laughs> okay. Is there any other... Um, questions or are we at the end of our thing do we want what we, else we've got we've got one more to do and that's the build the five-year um, building okay expenditure plan so Lynn, you want to go over that and well, that's behind tab f7 so it's our uh, building expense five-year maintenance plan and we provided this last year as well. It's been slightly updated since then. And some of the areas that we have included in our fiscal year 2022 budget includes our parking lot, the landscaping, the suite A entry door, and the floor, and then a minor uh, cost of replacing our kitchen faucet up in suite A. So, um, um, I have a list that we've generated from the small works roster to follow through by the end of this month to try to gather uh, specs together to go out for bid for the front door. Um, that's going to probably be under 2000 and then the floor is going to be under three, four, five thousand. It's hard to say there because of the faultiness of the front entry door, it has cause some water damage underneath the front entryway. Is this an insurance claim? I don't know, possibly. It really depends on how much it comes in. And um, so we're gonna look at everything we can. And as, as you all know, it's a prevailing wage job when we bring any contractor in. There are procedures that we have to follow because of our applicability to the small works roster and the prevailing wage laws. So we'll be working on that. Um, as soon as the audit's over with, the budget process is over with, and a few other things, I'll be tackling that and we'll be reporting back to you and keeping you updated on that. So, you, you know, yes. Oh. You know what would be um, good? I, I like this as well, but it would be good to have a page where in fiscal year one, we're doing this, 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 and total, and fiscal two, did, 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 did. 
total. So you get some idea of what is being um, up and needing to be taken care of. So and what they that. need to be postponed or whatever. Right, and that's where the numbers come into play at on the list. One, if you see one, those are the items that I identified. And I hear what you're saying, Cynthia. I'll be more specific. Maybe I'll, I'll add another column with the year that this will take place next to the number, the priority one, two, three, four, five. Is that something that would work for you? Or, or we could do a subgroup that says, okay, next year is fiscal year, the fiscal year one, we can pull out those things and put a dollar amount. So we can do a cumulative dollar amount for those things that are gonna be coming up in that next fiscal year. So we can, sure. do, we can do it that way too. Yeah, or a, yeah, that's what or a left to right chart that has the, the projects on the left in the years. So you can yeah. see them one at a time. Right. Okay. Sounds good. And then I have two comments, Cynthia. Um, I'd like to see a solar project incorporated in the re roof replacement. Yeah. And then I'd also like us to have a conversation about going away from gas when we replace those HVAC units. It's my understanding that if we put in heat, heat pumps instead of AC units, it's not a very much expense. And, and in this climate, you can heat your building with the, heat, with the electric heat pump about 90% of the year and the gas will just kick on, uh, you know, it, when it gets really cold. And so, I, I, you know, from a climate standpoint, that's going to be the future in policy is to eliminate natural ga gas. And I, I'd like to us to at least run the numbers about modeling that even if we can't afford it. I think that's great too. And I know you got five years on that one. So it's a moment you got a few, we have a few minutes, but it'd be really nice to dial that in and have a policy conversation about our building. And I'd like to reduce the number of, um, we have six heating and cooling systems right now. Um, and so on the other side of the building, the, you know, my old office and the office next to it are separate. And that was because of when this building was configured for, I think it was, I don't know, whatever the company it was, um, they have that special things over there. So um, what my goal is, again, when we need to replace the heating cooling system on the other side, that we eliminate one of those systems and try to do something. We have to fix the ductwork, obviously, to make it match. But I'd like to be more efficient there, too. So, yeah. So yeah, maybe we should look at a bid to redesign the entire system to make it the most efficient and climate friendly rather than just replacing the units and compare that over the long term. Is the building um, already weatherized or do you need to look at that? Um, in terms of, I, I, I think we had a company look at insulation. We've replaced some windows, I know that. Um, but this is, well, I've got to say, this building is not a great building for, uh, in terms of its construction. Um, but I'm not sure, I can't remember, Lynn, I don't know if you remember what they, what happened when we had the evaluation on insulation. Yeah, and it's been a long time since, and we do have that identified on the list, definitely. Insulation of walls, attic, crawl spaces. Yeah. So, and it's just not the oh, yes. noise, but for weatherization. For sure, it's something we had. We've had PSE come out. Oh, when was that? Five, six, golly, five, six years ago, and they did test this. And most recently, when they came to do a energy analysis uh, that I reported back on a couple months ago, that was also considered the weatherization. And he was here. I think I followed him around for six hours, watching him, um, you know, test the walls. The anyway, Pretty interesting. So I think we're time, I think it's definitely time to consider uh, definitely getting a full scope workup on this building and the weatherization needs. And But the interesting thing, the cost of our, our natural gas, our electricity, we definitely fall in under a size building that we have here um, below what, what the typical costs are. So mm -hmm. for almost a 10,000 square foot building that includes the warehouse of 1,500 square feet, the, the operating and maintenance cost of this building has been considerably less than what is average. So sorry, I don't have those numbers for you, right? But uh, we had a very good, an A minus report card on this building. Well, that's good. The only reason why I mentioned it, it also helps reduce our energy costs which then is a uh, climate kind of an issue too. So 
we are getting down to our um, need for our board meeting. Additional uh, comments or anything that we need to talk just, about? Just one quick one, and that's can we try and make this language in these documents gender neutral? So, uh, you know, women and uh, and 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 trans people can also go through doors. So a man door is not a thing. Does it say that? Yes, yeah, yes understood, a, Jim. Understood. A person door. Yes. Or just a door. Or just a door. But you, you don't know if it's a vehicle. Door. That's what they're talking about, distinguishing. Yes. An entry door. Yes, understood. Thank you. Yeah. And at some point, I'd you know, park this. I'd like to go through all of our policies and bylaws and, and make sure that it's gender neutral and inclusive. We're doing that, aren't we, Debbie? I think we're doing that as we go through our, our, other pol our policies. Okay, so if there is nothing else, um, I noticed that there's um, some uh, chat. Um, I think um, it's not any questions so far. So with that, is everyone comfortable with me um, closing out the meeting? Okay, so we will see you in two minutes.